This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship here at the Presbyterian Church of Wyoming. We are so glad that you are here this morning worshiping with us. I want to start off with a few announcements. One, uh, next Sunday is going to be Be the Church Sunday. We will not have a worship service here at 11 o'clock next Sunday. We encourage you in the gathering area to sign up for one of our mission opportunities. There's a variety of, of things that you can do here and out. Uh, go check in the gathering area. We've got several of our sign-up sheets there. We really encourage you to do that on your way out today. So we will be doing a brief worship service at 9 a.m. on the Burns Avenue side of the building. Um, and then we're going to be dispersing for our various mission projects. Uh, for anybody here who's a part of the Maple Knoll community, uh, I and Joe and other folks from our choir will be leading a worship service at the chapel in Maple Knoll at 10 a.m. if you're interested in attending that uh, there at Maple Knoll in their beautiful chapel. So we're looking forward to that opportunity as part of our Be the Church Sunday. I um, want to give you a heads up in, uh, in our bulletin. You'll see that after the prayer of dedication, we have a hymn, and it's a hymn number that's quite large. Uh, it's not the big blue hymnal, it's the little blue hymnal. So just when you see that, it's the Sing the Faith blue hymnal for that hymn. And remember that uh, while you're here to uh, help us keep track of you being here in your presence, Please fill out the pew pads that are at the end of your pews. That helps us keep track and to welcome our neighbor um, this morning. I now would like to turn it over to Joe and Katie. Uh, they, uh, Joe Hornsby and Katie Town will be sharing a little bit about a mission project that we are supporting this year called The Walk to Remember. Um, and we're going to bring them forward to share a little bit more about that, uh, that sponsorship that we're having this year. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Now, pregnancy and infant loss affects approximately one in four of every family uh, in a variety of different ways. Uh, we're grateful for the PCW Missions team in supporting this awareness and supporting our families here in the congregation, in our community, and in our greater Cincinnati area uh, with today's walk to remember that's happening at 2 o'clock at uh, the Oak Hill Cemetery. Um, this is meaningful to families experiencing this loss and grief. Uh, recently, and all who live with this uh, shared past experience. Uh, October was originally named National Pregnancy and Infant Loss Awareness month in 1988, uh, Ronald Reagan declared that day saying, when a child loses their parents, they're called an orphan. When a spouse loses her or his partner, they're called a widow or a widower. When parents lose their child, there isn't a word to describe. This month recognizes the loss that so many parents experience across the U.S. and around the world. It's meant to inform and provide resources and support for parents. Uh, who have lost children, and for us here at PCW to open our heart, hearts and arms uh, to them in our community. The Angel of Hope statue was introduced to the world in a book called The Christmas Box, which many of you may have read. It's a world bestseller, and it was later made into a movie. In this story, a woman mourns the loss of her child at the base of an angel monument. Though the story is mostly fiction, the Angel Monument once existed, but is speculated to have been removed or destroyed. As the book and movie grew in popularity, parents actually were seeking out that location to visit the Angel Statue as a place to grieve and heal for children they had lost, just as the lady did in the story. But it no longer existed. After countless inquiries, a new Angel Statue was commissioned to be built in Salt Lake City, Utah, near where the original had once stood. The monument was dedicated on December 6, 1994, corresponding with the date of the child's death in the Christmas box. Flowers and notes sent around the world, from around the world adorn the base of the monument year-round to this day. 
There are now over 120 angel pope statues throughout the world. And that includes one here in Cincinnati at Oak Hill Cemetery near Tri-County, which is where many of our greater Cincinnati area will gather today for the Walk of Remembrance. There's much symbolism in this statue. Um, I wish I could put a picture up, but since I can't, I need you all to help. And if you were here a couple of weeks ago, this may be somewhat familiar, but if you could just put your hands up in front of you this way and then extend them to the sides. This is the general pose of the, the angel statue. Um, the reason the arms of the angel are outstretched are to welcome all that come to it and to be lifted into the arms of loving parents. There's also shared vulnerability when we stand like this. We can't protect our chests. We can't protect our hearts. Instead, our hearts are open to our neighbors, emulating Christ's love and compassion. On the angel's wing is inscribed the word hope. And Katie will read the inscription at the base of the statue. At the Tri-County statue, the inscription at the base of the monument reads something to the effect that a piece of my heart will always hold your hand. But on many of these statues around the world, they are inscribed with this poem. In my heart, you live on, always there, never gone. Precious child, you left too soon. Though it may be true that we're apart, you will live forever in my heart. In my soul, there's a hole that can never be filled. But in my heart, there is hope, because you are with me still. This statue um, was actually dedicated right after my son passed, who would have been 16 this February. He lived five and a half days. And I came to learn that it was much more important than even I initially realized when my elderly neighbor took an interest in it. Um, and she revealed to me that 40 some years prior to us losing our child, she had also lost a child. And during that time, many families, um, which some of you may know, um, if you lost um, an infant um, close to birth um, or stillborn at the hospital, um, you, also, you often didn't receive the child's remains, so you didn't have a place to go to grieve those children. So when that was dedicated and um, I asked her if they read each child's name at the memorials uh, walk each year, if you'd like them to, and that was the first time her child's name had ever been spoken aloud in remembrance. So it's very important for, for many generations of people and is welcome to all. Just say a, a prayer really fast if you could join me, please. Um, Heavenly Father, we believe you are the giver of life, that we're made in your image and likeness, and all things come from you. We pray this morning for lives lost and ended too soon amid these challenging times we're living in. We especially remember today and this month those that only began for the briefest of time. We pray for them and for their families. Even in grief, we look to your grace and presence to be with us. We're thankful for our faith communities and communities of support, especially here in Wyoming, PCW, and the love for our neighbors that's present here. We're grateful for the perinatal loss and grief support team who organizes today's walk and remembrance. Let us remember that even in our midst of loss, God continues to offer us great gifts of joy, excitement, and hope for what lies ahead. While we pray for those we've lost too soon, we're also thankful and blessed with those who have long life, like Howard celebrating his 100th birthday this week. May you continue to bless him and us with this precious gift, allowing us to use our abilities and time here in this life to you. Thank you, Joe. Thank you, Katie. We welcome you to worship this morning on this World Communion Sunday, where we remember our connection with Christians all over the world who worship the same, the same God whose love stretches out wide. A God who, through Jesus Christ, has set a table before us and invited us to come and sit down at the table and then offers us the incredible gifts of his very own life, his body and his blood. 
Here at this table, like all of our tables, Christ is with us. So as we prepare for worship, start our worship, let us begin with our call to worship. Please stand as we say these words in its response. God has been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, where you had formed the earth, you have been God. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love. Glad of all our days. Let us worship the God of love. Let us sing our opening hymn when morning gilds the skies.
before Adam comes forward, I want us to do something that we do at the 9.30. I want you to go ahead and turn to one of your neighbors and go, Neighbor, you are forgiven. Turn to another neighbor and say, Neighbor, you are loved. Oh, man. Invite Adam and Haley to come forward for our children's moment. All right. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Want to invite any kids that want to come up. Kicking or screaming is fine. Come on, okay, Charlie. And as Charlie makes his way down, uh, I wanted to let you all know that soon, in a few weeks, we're going to start a new program during the Sunday Sunday school. But we're going to do an art project together, and there will be Sunday school kids there. There will also be kids from the community and lads and lassies there, and some parents there. It's going to be all ages, and we're going to have a way for you all to participate as well. After service, there's going to be an opportunity for you to respond to the question, what does a future with hope look like? So there will be more details coming soon, um, but just wanted to let you know that you all will be thinking about that. All right, good morning, good morning. So, that's some good news and something sad to talk about. The good news is, at the end, there's ice cream involved, which is yes. all we want. You can say that you give one time, Charlie? Yes! <laughs> Now, first we have to talk about the sad news. And, yeah, I know. The sad news is, in this world, bad things happen. They do. And very sad things happen. And like Mr. Joe and Ms. Katie talked about this morning, sometimes little babies don't, don't live very long. They're with us for a very short time, and then they die. And it's really, really sad. And one thing that I've noticed, that a lot of times when this happens, probably every time, is that so many people love this baby, even though the baby's only with the seconds or minutes or a few months. In that short period of time, so many people love the baby, from moms and dads to cousins and brothers and grandparents, and they have all this love. And one of the things they do with this love is they love other people in remembrance of that baby. And there is a family in this community in Wyoming that did that. And a little baby named Sammy, and his mom and dad just kept on loving Sammy by loving other people. And they did something, they have a gift for you this morning. We'll give you a gift from Sammy's parents, okay? So this is a gift, that's Sammy there. And this is a gift, and it gets you free ice cream. Isn't that a nice gift from Sammy's parents? And the ice cream is actually, actually named after Sammy. It's called Sammy's Soft Serve. It's here in Wyoming. And then you can take that and take and get that gift and enjoy it and think about Sammy when you eat it. And then you can have another one and you can give it to someone else to keep on loving Sammy and then remember it. And you can have some too. Like that. She's thinking about it. Yeah. There you go. There you go. I think your dad has some more stuff. That's for you. All right. So if you can pray with me, one thing that parents need and families need when this happens. They need a lot of love from us because it's very sad. So we need to help love them through it, okay? So if you want to pray with me, you can bow your head, put your hands together, whatever you like, and you can repeat after me if you like to. Dear God, Dear God thank you for loving us. Thank you for loving us. Even in the hard times. Even in the hard times. Help us remember. Help us remember. By loving others. By loving others. In Jesus' name. Let us pray. Holy God, we bring our whole selves to you. We ask that you would receive us as we are, and as the scriptures are read, and your word is proclaimed, let us hear your word of love for us this day. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
We were fully present to one another. We were united in spirit. We were made one with one another in joy. Now maybe you haven't been to the pumpkin show, so you haven't been able to share the vanilla Coke and the elephant here, but I would guess that you have shared in table fellowship that took on a sacramental quality. A birthday dinner where generations gather and eat and share memories together. The drop off of a casserole to someone who is grieving or the funeral meal where people share with one another in their sorrow. The evening with friends where you slow down, you linger at the table, you get to know one another more deeply, and time just seems to suspend into eternity. Much of Jesus' ministry occurred at the table, and people questioned his guest list, why he would associate with them, and yet Jesus welcomed the outcasts and the sinners, his disciples, his friends, even his enemies, and he drew them all together in fellowship with one another. He made these very different people into one family, sharing in a meal together, learning, laughing, disagreeing, questioning, loving. He talked through parables about banquets and feasts, and his last supper with his disciples was no different. It was a meal. It was a parable. It was a teaching moment. It was an embodiment of Christ's welcome and love. Now see, we think of the Last Supper, communion, as this totally separate thing from the rest of our lives, and yet Jesus was eating a meal and turning it into something more. And it wasn't as neat and tidy as our little cubes and our little pre-portioned drinks. This was a messy meal. And yes, it was with his friends, but it was his friends who would betray him and desert him and deny him. And yet, that doesn't stop Jesus' love. Jesus has a meal with them and reminds them that he loves them and is providing for them, and is drawing them together in fellowship even when they mess things up, even when they do the worst things. They're welcome at the table and invited to be transformed by God's self-giving love. We're told that on the night he was betrayed, Jesus takes the bread and he blesses it, he breaks it and says, take, eat, do this in remembrance of me. And then later in the same meal, he takes the cup and says, this cup is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. But what exactly are we remembering? We're remembering that Jesus welcomes us to the table, that Jesus provides hospitality not just to those who are faithful, but to those who need encouragement, those who will mess things up, those who will fall asleep instead of paying attention to their friends' suffering. Jesus nourishes us for our journey, welcoming us back again and again so that we might know him more and more. And also that we might be united with all of those who gather at Christ's table. For Presbyterians, we have come to understand that through communion, we are spiritually lifted into Christ's presence. And in communion, we're made one, yes, with Christ, but with one another. And with the Christians who have come before us. And on World Communion Day, we remind ourselves that it's not just the people in this room that gather, but it's the people across the world and throughout the ages who have gathered at Christ's table. As we've been interviewing for our organist position, one of our candidates reflected on this historic sanctuary where we sit right now. 
and how this room has held the prayers of all those who have gathered in this space. The tears and the joy, the praise and the quiet, all that we come to bring to church, this room has held it all, and we are united with one another, and those prayers surround us. So today we join with those who worship before us in the great room, and those who are worshiping with us online, and our brothers and sisters in Cambodia and Uganda and Gary, West Virginia and Asheville, North Carolina, they too are drawn into our fellowship. Those who have gone before us, the generations before us, whether those were pregnancies that were lost, young ones who died way too early, or our great grandmothers who lived to the ripe old age of 97 or 100 or even older than that. God makes us one in Christ. In communion, we're given a foretaste of the glory to come, where all are invited, all are made welcome, all are made one in the fellowship of the saints. At the table, we come as we are, whether rejoicing or in deep sorrow, knowing that in communion, God's love holds us and all that we bring with us to the table. And while we only need to be baptized once, we come to the table again and again. Because Jesus knew Jesus knew that his disciples would betray him and deny him, but he welcomes them to the table anyway. And Jesus welcomes us again and again and again so that we might experience grace and acceptance and love. Jesus tells us to do this in remembrance of him, in remembrance of his great gift. His willingness to confront the cross for our sakes. In remembrance of his power over the deepest depths of evil and sin and how he rises in resurrection glory. Jesus welcomes us to the table. Yes, the table of the official sacrament of the church communion so that we might remember, but I think Jesus' invitation extends beyond that. I think Jesus is inviting us to allow what happens in the holiness of the sacrament as we gather here in this place and let it overflow into our regular daily lives so that we can experience the sacrament as a church and let it shape us and remember God's blessing and share that blessing whether that's with our cranky kids at the dinner table who we just want to eat their dinner, or with beloved friends, or with our co-workers. Each time we experience God's blessing, we're invited to share it. And to do that in remembrance of Jesus Christ. Now, for me, one of the hardest things about this pandemic is that table fellowship, which is like the cornerstone of all the church gathering, right? We've been built on potlucks. <laughs> We've been built on our shared meal at Christ's table. We haven't been able to do that in the ways that we want to. And yet, we can get creative, and we have been getting creative. We can still show hospitality to others. We can be kind to the grocery store cashiers who are overwhelmed or encouraging to school teachers who are working so hard in such difficult circumstances. We can show grace to our friends and our co-workers who are having a hard time. We're reinventing what it means to show up for people and yet as we remember Jesus' love for us, we continue to be moved to acts of love and hospitality to others. Because we know when we do so, it's a way that we extend this table from this place out into the world. We extend the communion of saints 
all those imperfect people from time and space who have loved God and have shared in God's love, we bring that with us to a hurting world who needs a taste of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now let us stand and state what we believe using the Apostles' Creed. Christians, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. Third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. Let us now give back to the God who has welcomed us to the table uh, by giving our morning tithes and offerings. And the ushers, please come forward.
graciously extend to us. Help us not only to accept it with thanksgiving and gratitude, but to freely share it with those whose lives are restricted or crushed by the meanness of this world. Make us not only receivers, but generous and unpretentious givers. To the glory of your name, through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Please be seated. Oh, can I just, can I just remain seated during this hymn? During this hymn, please, you can remain seated during this hymn, sorry. This is our communion hymn. You're going to see this on the Sing the Faith uh, hymn, and the hymn book. Let us sing it. Again and again and again. 
We have been told that on the night that he was taken to be tortured to death on a cross, Jesus sat with his disciples and ate with them in a meal of remembrance. And Jesus took the loaf of bread and broke it after giving a blessing and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, eat it. This is me, my body given for you. Each time you eat it, remember me. Close to the meal's end, he took a cup filled with wine and asked your blessing upon it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink it. This is me. This is my promise in my life's blood, poured out for you and for the world. Each time you drink of it, remember me. And so his disciples, we his disciples, eat and drink wine, and we remember Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and these gifts of bread and wine that they may be for us the body and blood of Christ, and that we may be his body for a hurting world. Lord, today we lift up a couple of prayers. We want to pray for the Hornsby family after the passing of Vicki's father, and for Lammy Engelman as she transitions over to Bodman and Bacon Mall. We ask that through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor are yours, O Lord, now and forever. Now let us together pray the prayer that our Savior taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We give thanks for this bread, for the fruit of the earth, the wheat, the hard work that it took to create this bread, the gift of the grace of God. And we break it. We share it like we would at our tables at home, remembering the words and actions of the teacher from Nazareth, Jesus Christ, our Savior. And then we give thanks for the fruit of the vine, for those who made it possible for us to enjoy this, for the joy of communion, for the alliances that endure in the search for love and justice and wholeness. We take this cup, knowing that we are part of a community people, renewing its covenant with God at every minute, at every meal. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I now encourage you to take your communion out of your bags there. This is the body of Christ broken for you. And the cup of salvation poured out for you and for many. Fill us with gratitude 
with thanksgiving, with hope, that we might serve you better each and every day of our lives. Help us, Lord. We who share Christ's body and receive his cup to be faithful disciples so that our daily lives, our daily living, may reflect you and your love. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let us now stand and sing our final hymn, Savior Like a Shepherd Lead Us. Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. 